Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucians who have contributed to nation building have been recognized by the state. The development of agro processing advances with the commissioning of two plants in Angers. Scores of young St. Lucians grasp the opportunity for higher learning in Taiwan. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. The Lucians who have contributed to nation building in various areas of service the country, dedication to community, were recognized by the state for their patriotism at the 2019 Independence Awards. Here's Chanel Norville with more. The Order of St. Lucia is an order of chivalry established in 1986 by Queen Elizabeth II. Commonly referred to as the Independence Anniversary Awards, the insignia of the order are conferred on the 22nd February to citizens of St. Lucia and other persons for achievement, acts of bravery, or meritorious service. A number of St. Lucians as part of St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence were recognized and awarded for their contribution and services to St. Lucia. Chair of the National Awards Committee, Senator Mauricio Thomas Francis, highlighted the significance of the awards. Our awardees represent a group of illustrious St. Lucians from a wide cross-section of fields, including medicine, the judiciary, religion, the arts, philanthropy, community development, the public service, inter alia. Men and women who have rendered highly commendable service above self in their respective fields and chosen philanthropic endeavors. The St. Lucia Cross, Kenneth Allen Patrick Moplesi, QC, SLC, CBE, OBE, for distinguished service in the field of arts, law, and humanitarian causes. Mr. Kenneth Moplesi is an attorney by profession who has made a significant contribution towards the arts and humanitarian causes in St. Lucia throughout his lifetime. He attained a barrister at law qualification from Gray's Inn in London in 1957 and has been, pra been a practicing barrister in St. Lucia and other Caribbean islands since. Dr. George Joseph Ford received the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold and Angela Marriott received the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver. Dr. Stephen James King, SLC, OBE for long and meritorious service in the field of medicine. Dr. King, Dr. Stephen King, was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, fathered by the legendary St. Lucian surgeon, Dr. Owen King. He received his early education at the St. Aloysius R.C. Boys School, St. Mary's College, and the then A-Level College, earning the 1976 St. Lucia Island Scholarship to study medicine at the University of the West Indies. Returning home in 1988, he distinguished himself as the island's first pathologist. Augustine Julian, Arthur Willard Lison, and Cynthia Weeks were awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver was awarded to Patrick Gilson Simeon and Byron Ignatius Dyer. Carlis Modestas Neville Noel, Andre Abel Lansico, and Paula St. Luce were awarded the St. Lucia L'Opitor Medal Gold. Mr. Carlos Modestus Neville Noel for long and meritorious service in the field of entrepreneurship and community development. Mr. Carlos Noel has been actively involved in the growth and development of the community of Labry. His love for that community where he spent much of his formative years, has been unwavering. Although he spent almost 20 years in Sufre, his burning desire to give back to the community of his birth was visible in him donating his time and talent in the supervision of the Library Bridge Lighting Project. Theresa Jean Charles, Theresa Double and Paul Lord were awarded the St. Lucia L'Hopital Medal Silver and Theodore Charles was awarded the St. Lucia L'Hopital Medal Bronze. Severin Morsheri was awarded the National Service Cross and Gabriel Harrow the National Service Medal. The ceremony was held on Sunday 24 February 2019. 
From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The development and use of agro-processing techniques in the quest to diversify the island's agriculture sector and add value to locally grown produce has advanced yet again with the commissioning of two agro-processing plants in Ange Miku. The facilities are under the command of the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women Miku Cluster. Agriculture officials, the diplomatic corps and residents all gathered to witness the handover of the Urge Agro Processing Facility and the Cocoa Processing Plant, two multi-million dollar investments by the government of St. Lucia and the European Union. Speaking at the commissioning ceremony last weekend, Agriculture Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph says he is elated that he is able to deliver to the people of Miku North and South a state-of-the-art HACCP compliant facility. The focus, he insists, lies not only in adding value to our locally grown crops, but to ensure that our processed goods adhere to the latest international food safety standards. We believe as a government that agro-processing is critical because we are very seasonal in our production pattern. When we have mangoes, we have too many mangoes is going to waste. When you have citrus, we have too many citrus is going to waste. Representative of the European Union delegation to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean states, Mr. Bogdan Stefanescu, in applauding the diligence of the island's agriculture leaders, says St. Lucia has made good on its part in the bilateral agreement, which includes placing sharp focus and strategic actions on growing cottage industries. EU has supported the Angers processing facility in this spirit, together with two other agro-processing facilities on this island. And I'm proud that the European Union has contributed to the development of this amenity by allocation of the necessary budget for its refurbishment and equipment. The BUM program has also targeted the banana competitiveness and, dis and contributed in the rebound of the banana export business. I was pleasantly surprised to hear that thanks to the combined efforts of the Ministry of Agriculture and its development partners, San Lucia has boosted earlier than expected its banana e exports while at the same time reaching new destinations on the European continent, such as the French market. Thus far, St. Lucia has benefited from an injection of 10 million euros for the stimulation and expansion of agro-processing on the island. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, I'm Amanda Fee Clark reporting. The government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, continues to partner with the government of St. Lucia in development initiatives for St. Lucians. Recently, scores of young St. Lucians desirous of attaining higher learning in Taiwan attended a briefing on the available scholarship programs. The Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, encouraged the successful applicants to give up their best in all endeavors and serve as ambassadors to St. Lucia. There's no greater gift that one can share with another than to equip one with knowledge. Because indeed, knowledge is power. And that knowledge, my friends, is not meant for you to perceive yourselves to be better than those who perhaps have a little less than you do. No, that's not the purpose of that knowledge. That knowledge is to equip you to plow back into your community and into your country for the betterment of all. The scholarship programs provide opportunities to young St. Lucians to study in Taiwan for bachelor, master, and PhD degrees. Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Douglas Shen encouraged the applicants to ensure a balanced life while studying in Taiwan. You have to balance your mindset, okay? Study hard and play a little bit, have some fun in Taiwan. You know, Taiwan, because Taiwan is an island just like St. Lucia, a little bit bigger. We have uh, uh, 36,000 uh, square meters in Taiwan, and the shape of Taiwan just like St. Lucia. We uh, have beautiful coast, we have a lot of big high mountains. Uh, I was told in Taiwan we have uh, more than 20 mountains you know, higher than. 3,000 meters. That means uh, in, up in the mountain is snoring, but the, down in the beach you can go ski, you can go, you can you go swimming. 
since re-establishing diplomatic relations with the Republic of China-Taiwan in 2007, over 150 St. Lucians have benefited from the annual scholarship. All application documents should be delivered to the Embassy of the Republic of China-Taiwan, Raidwood Beach Avenue, Rodney Bay, Grosley, by the deadline Friday, 15th March, 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Hello everyone, and welcome to your regular update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 Massey United Schools Cricket Tournament resumed on Monday, February 25th, with five matches. At the grocery playing field, Leonis Comprehensive Secondary completely outplayed Babano Secondary, winning that encounter convincingly by 10 wickets. Babano Secondary, winning the toss and batting first, could only muster 71 all out in 21 overs, with Yannick Noel, 23, the only batsman to reach double figures. Left arm orthodox spinner Jaden Elibox bowled impressively for Leon Hess, finishing with figures of 5 for 25 in his allocation of 10 overs. The other wicket takers were left arm spinner Captain Kagan Arnold with 3 for 20, and north spinner Udell Preville, 2 wickets for 4 runs. Set 72 runs for victory, Leon Hess, led by opening batsman Keegan Arnold with 36 not out, and Benaya Monsi, 28 not out, made light work of their target, finishing on 76 with fourth loss, only after seven overs. At the Balata playing field, the Iris Simmons secondary won a nail biter against Vidbutai secondary by two runs. The Iris Simmons secondary batting first after winning the toss, dismissed 485 in 28 overs. With Gabriel Bissett hitting his second consecutive half century of the tournament, he scored 61, which included five fours and six sixes. Joseph Epiphan got 18 and Carrick Victor 11. Bowling for Vidbutai secondary. Marvel Cyril back 4 for 24. Davidson Pierre Louis 3 for 42. Avelina's calendar 2 for 26. Facing 186 for victory. Vidbutai secondary led by a half century. From Levon Dupre 53 with four fours and three sixes. Fell perilously close to Sir Ira Simmons' total, finishing on 183 all out in 32 overs. James Donai with 20, Avalina's calendar 15, and Noel Imanis 10 also made valuable contributions. The most successful bowlers for Sir Ira Simmons were Jaquan Epiphan with 3 for 32, and Gabriel Bisset 2 for 20. Adela Rissou's playing field in the Mabria Valley. John Adler Memorial won over Granny Vier Secondary by five wickets. John Adler Memorial Secondary won the toss and invited Granny Vier Secondary to bat first, and they made 122 all out in 19.5 overs. With the main scorers being Darnell de Turville with 40 and Nikwan Henry 32. Bowling for John Adler Memorial. Januar Dews picked up three for seven in two overs, caught William two for 20, and Shan Wee two for 30. Set a victory target of 123, John Adler Memorial Secondary got to the total finishing on 123 for 5, with Nivon Mitchell making 24 and Ezran Jules 10 not out. Bowling for Granny Vier Secondary, Chem Kamabach claimed 2 wickets for 2 runs. At the Wen Plain Field in Monipo, Miku Secondary, enjoying a very light day at the office, defeated Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary by 10 wickets. And then Mason Memorial secondary batting first, hit a lot for 29 in 10.2 overs, doing the damage with the ball for Miku secondary, where Brent Edward with three wickets for one run, and the catch Henry three for 19, Jalen Justin two for nine. With just 30 runs needed for victory, Miku secondary opening batsman Keon Gaston 15 not out, and Neandi Turville four not out, easily brought victory 
with a team in just 3.2 overs. At the PI playing field, Super Comprehensive Secondary registered an easy 8 wicket victory over PI Secondary. PI Secondary batting first after being inserted by Super Comprehensive never got going and was dismissed for 44 in 14 overs, with Joshua Monero making 10. But Super Comprehensive team bowlers Stefan Teofin with 4 for 14 in 5 overs and Kevin Gassi 2 for 9 did the damage of the ball. To the target of 45 for victory, Super Comprehensive finished on 45 for 2 with Nick Jabatis and Anil Foshe remaining undefeated on 21 and 9 respectively. Minister for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, is banking on further sporting elements for St. Lucia as government continues to focus on providing the proper infrastructure to assist in improving sporting performances by nationals. Minister Estefan made the remarks during the recent sports award ceremony. We promise to keep the public educated and updated as we commence groundworks and proceed with this major sports infrastructural programs and development. So by our 41st year of independence next year, our sportsmen and women will begin to enjoy new and upgraded world-class state-of-the-art sporting infrastructure and program support that will come from the National Lotteries Authorities. That's all from us at Youth and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Our journey, our future, our data for national development is the theme for St. Lucia's first ever online open data showcase in commemoration of the 2019 International Open Data Day on March 2nd. Fairheaded by the Department of Public Services St. Lucia Open Data Initiative, the online open data showcase will be launched on March 1 and will provide an opportunity to highlight the use of data in both the public and private sector with a view of showing the importance of data in decision making, productivity, and inevitably, national development. In 2014, St. Lucia became the first country in the Caribbean to participate in an open data readiness assessment as part of the World Bank Program of Assistance of the Caribbean. Submissions are therefore invited for projects, research papers, applications, or any works done utilizing data available on St. Lucia's open data website, data.dovt.lc. In order to submit an entry, participants must complete the online entry form available on the open data website, data.dovt.lc. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. La main propre c'est chemin bon santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tenir bon santé. Quand même si vous n'avez pas de glossite, vous avez fait ces bagages là. Écoutez, laver la main souvent et puis vous net avec savon après condition qui a 6 mai 20 minutes. Par exemple, vous pouvez laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs par servi très vite, vous tuez les gens qui sont blessés et bien malades, après vous tuez les animaux et après vous entamez les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas de Pour sa service, sa yo kakouye hand sanitizer et be alcohol pour 30 secondes. Lavez les mains souvent. Ça c'est yon manière pour empêcher maladie. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, priez bureau information santé à numéro 468-6349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquéon. Merci au temps, Nisha. Monsieur, madame, Le département qui responsabilité pour information à gouvernement ce qui à ce que télévision nationale puis à NTN Capesato, Nouvelle Acquéole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Projet pour développement et pour Hewanora a dans une façon qui nouveau et bien avancé et qui a porté un plan qui a une capacité à pour dire pour plus que trois années. Développement nouveau sala qui a improuvé à ce tout système opération et pour neuf sala. Si l'on gère pour cela, Darren Snack, parmi ce qui est nouveau à l'aéroport, c'est la construction d'un établissement neuf pour conduire le trafic avion. C'est une facilité neuf pour avion poser et déposer à ce aéroport. Snack annonce que l'aéroport neuf est une facilité qui est très avancée et moderne 
et qu'il n'y a plus de placement qui est couvert à haut de 337 000 pieds carrés. Le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour faire un port en PIA, on est à Stevenson King, petit rayon portrait en façon qui est au poste là, qui est bâti côté et qui facilité très bien la manière les passagers qui sont bâtis et débattus de ces avions. Ça, ça pièce de difficulté. La CAI aussi ni système en place pour faciliter tout degré de l'opération à l'aéroport de Fsala. En fait, selon M. King, les passagers ne peuvent pas expérimenter des pièces mal tête pour voyager. Pour les créatifs concernant la sécurité pour les groupes et les autres apportés. Le ministre King déclare que l'aéroport de Fsala et Wanora sont assez plus belles et plus avancées que les gens qui ont été en train de Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasté est très excité pour parler du développement de nouveaux salaires. Le Premier ministre Chastel parlait très vite à des aéroports neuf salas à des gros services que les passagers qu'ils recevraient. Selon le Premier ministre, là, c'est un projet qui s'est décidé ni pour embrasser et puis en pile croyance parce qu'ils ont fait les passagers tenir pour perdre autant de temps qu'à plein forme par ici, forme par là, qu'ils perdent tant de salas. Ils ont pas qu'ils perdent tant de salas encore. Vous trouvez à Tikio. Pièce c'est mal de temps salas pas qu'ils existent, pas qu'à payer encore. Selon le Premier ministre Chastel. C'est un bâché et volé, et bien débâché et parti en maison, et bien en hôtel. C'est un moment où tu as été pour commencer le projet de développement de l'Union européenne. Tu peux écouter dimanche, le 24 février. Il y a un jeune business à cette ici, à chemin pour trouver plus de l'honneur de l'organisation Commonwealth. Là. Ça, c'est les jeunes gens qui sont plus avancés en business à ce pays comme on Les jeunes grecs pour business à un pays à Algas Organique, M. Johan en deux jours, c'est un ancien jeunesse qui, pays l'Angleterre, a choisi pour trouver l'on est là. M. Doujon, c'est un jeune pays représentatif pour l'occasion de ça. M. Philippe Parham, un bureau représentatif du gouvernement de l'Angleterre, j'ai dit passé. M. Parham a déclaré que l'organisation et le gouvernement de l'Angleterre est plein et puis et force et jeunesse de ce pays comme un là qui a développé, conduit et point de qualité initiative pour hausser la valeur du pays et l'économie du pays. Alors, pour raison ça, il a placé 500 millions de points pour aider la jeunesse à développer plus de meilleurs business qui ont engagé à dedans Nous avons parlé et puis nous concernant la signification du développement de ce à ce business qui est inventé. Il a fait travail pour les gens, uh, uh, Miku, uh, Denry, uh, Pralé, ces places-là. Le uh, gouvernement de l'Angleterre a regardé uh, comme situation. C'est un bon bagage que nous avons fait. Et puis, il y a encore un chat différent pour les gens internationaux qui apprécient ce que nous avons fait. Et puis, à um, uh, Wad Sala, uh, vraiment, c'est un bagage qui a fait mais, très joli parce que um, le, le gouvernement comme ça a apprécié. Uh, uh, apprécié. Ça va faire, ça va dire comme si on va faire un bon, on va faire plus fort. Si l'on dit, sélection pour trouver grand l'honneur, c'est un témoignage pour manière les pays internationaux qui apprécient l'effort qui a fait par les jeunes. La porte qui partait qui a ouvert avant, ah, peut-être qui a ouvert actuellement, c'est pas ça là, puisque c'est vrai pour tout le monde qui a Si c'est le monde qui a apprécié ce qui va faire, Peut-être que ça va bon. être bon. Il a changé qui manière de garder ça au café. Moi, je crois que ça c'est un bon avec ça. Et puis, plus de monde qui connaît about tout, about qui ça au café, c'est plus de monde qui a acheté pour produit, plus de monde qui a supporté. Et puis, c'est ça. Johan Doujon, ça c'est M. Doujon, qui était payé à Wissetman pour participer à la grande affaire ça là à l'Angleterre. En continuation, pour défricher l'adresse du Premier ministre Alan Chastney, pour être bon dans cette ci nous allons placer attention à sa direction pays pour suivre un chemin pour bon succès et coopération parmi les peuples. Selon le Premier ministre Chastney, quand une nation, cette ci a accompli autant, mais comme si dit, le pays a commencé à perdre le chemin et à son parole, le Premier ministre, là, en dit nous tient bien en main ensemble pour abattre ces qualités de développement qui a menacé les pays comme cette ci Nous allons se mettre plutôt pour faire bataille contre une autre. Qu'a essayé de détruire, ça nous a accompli comme une nation. Le Premier ministre Chasné a euh, fait un grand appel pour les peuples cette ci pour chérir valeur nous, parce que c'est la seule manière de nous donner courage pour aider le pays. Le Premier ministre a crié à ce cette ci 
pour mutwe la terre et aussi nous-mêmes qui nous pouvons perdre l'habilité pour nous l'amitié pour nous l'autre. Il veut dire pour nous 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 blâmer pour nous l'autre et plutôt ça accepter fort nous. Il dit que c'est seulement que nous avons abattre ces mauvaises situations qui ont menacé le pays. Le premier ministre Chassene a déclaré que nous avons une nation qui est dépendante et qui a célébré le 40e anniversaire. C'est pour nous accepter la responsabilité pour embrasser le garantissement. Pour nous-mêmes, et que nous avons des pas sur nous, nous avons la vie à présent et que nous venir. Il conseille que nous pays cette liste qui a célébré l'accomplissement. Il faut nous réfléchir à ce que nous avons fait en temps passé, qui est plus, qui fait plus difficile pour nous accomplir le plan national. Pays. Nous allons continuer puis adresser le Premier ministre Chasse à ce que nous avons fait, à ce que nous avons fait. Pour nous. Et monsieur, mesdames, ça c'est côté nous, à toi, pour la nouvelle. Aujourd'hui, nous avons remercié autant pour garder mon cabaret en invitation pour je ne puis encore les réponses de l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Merci en pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. A high-pressure system over the Atlantic will continue to maintain brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting with this wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. Tides for Viewford Bay, low at 5.37 p.m., high at 12.10 a.m. Seas locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.21 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trump.